Thank you. Can I ask uh, the public in the gallery to leave quietly? The Parliament's still in session. The next item of business is a member's business debate on motion 11968 in the name of Tavish Scott on Hiles car parking charges. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Would those members who wish to speak in the debate press the request to speak buttons now, please? And I call on Tavish Scott to open the debate. Seven minutes are there about Mr. Tavish. Mr. Well, Tavish. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Scott. <laughs> thank, you. thank you very much, Deputy Presiding Officer. I'll leave your official title um, firmly on the, on the record. And can I thank minister, uh, members and indeed the Minister for uh, being present here for this, uh, uh, this afternoon's discussion. Um, th this uh, debate today is about Highlands Islands Airport's plans to impose car parking charges at Sumbra, Kirkwall and Stornoway, uh, uh, despite the fact they have uh, carried out absolutely no consultation on this matter whatsoever. Uh, in some ways, I, I feel really guilty about wasting Parliament's time on this because this is a measure I just simply don't think should be um, happening. Uh, Sumbra Airport is located on the most southerly tip of Shetland. The airport is 25 miles from Lerwick, the island's capital. The vast majority who fly uh, from Sumbra drive and park at the airport. Why? because there is no dedicated airport shuttle bus connecting to flights. There are, there are no public transport connections to Sumber from any other part of Shetland. A taxi to Lerwick costs £60 one way. To the North Isles of Shetland, the cost would be over £100. Now, Hyle runs Sumber and Kirkwall and Stornoway. They certainly know where Sumber is, but what islanders now know is that Hyle have no idea or simply do not care where the rest of Shetland is. I understand that Heil have financial pressures, but that should mean and should have meant a thorough assessment of how to save money. Heil have not published any savings options. Did the board consider any other option before making this decision on the 6th uh, of February? They now plan an island's tax uh, of three pounds a day for the privilege of parking at the, at the airport. Uh, that will be a tax, and it will be their tax, and that of the SNP, if this is allowed to happen. Have Heil consulted on this? No. Now, the First Minister said this was remiss, and I was grateful for that answer. I would ask the government to turn remiss into something stronger uh, today. Have, adop have Heil adopted the weasel words in their own strategic plan about working in partnership with island communities, airport consultative committees, and indeed local councils? No, they have not, and that is just unacceptable. A Shetland family who must park at Sumbra to fly south will now add £42 to the cost of a fortnight away. This will hit regular commuters, but it will not hit local government staff, health board staff, or others such as MSPs who can claim travel costs. That is just one public purse replenishing another, a fact that the finance secretary may want to consider. No, this measure will hit real people, people hardest, families, business people, voluntary sector representatives, and that's why it's simply so wrong. As the leadership of Shuttle Lions Council reminded the minister recently in Lerwick, there has been no impact assessment. I'm sure the minister also noticed that the, the Shuttle Lions Council motion expressing their complete opposition to Hyle's plans uh, just this week. And here's why. No discussion on public transport options or who would pay for them. No consideration of the inevitable parking fiasco that will now take place around the airport. And above all, no assessment of how this will hit working local people. It is one of politics' ironies that in the month government want Parliament to vote for the Islands Bill and island proofing, this tax is being imposed on islands. A tax that will hit economic and social vital vitality of the islands. Now, it will take some selling by the most persuasive of ministers, and Mr Yousaf is certainly that, to convince islanders that island proofing is any more now than just window dressing. Now, the only argument that Hyle and the Minister have for parking charges is the need to save money. Hyle is owned by ministers and receives an annual government grant. So if the government cut their budget, then car parking charges is the result. Now, the Minister could, of course, reverse that cut. But today, I have a proposal that would save money without hitting islanders. It is a proposal made five years ago and dismissed by Hyle. At that time, they were asked to change the heating system at Sumbra Terminal Building uh, to biomass. The capital cost would have been repaid in three years. The annual saving was £100,000 a year. There are obvious environmental benefits. What did Hyle do? Well, nothing. Now, you multiply that £100,000 annual saving across Hyle's estate, and the total probably would be more than the £400,000 that they claim will be raised by parking charges. Now, I accept the figures would need to be updated, 
but the suggestion that there are no financial alternatives to car parking is simply not so. So today I say to the Minister, please halt this tax on island life, a tax that undermines the ADS policy, a policy I very much support and endorse his personal steps in that area. Instruct Hyle what to do, and that is to conduct a proper assessment of their own operations, because by definition of what I've been told, they have not done that. And if they don't do that, get rid of this board, a board with no island knowledge whatsoever, and appoint people who can run the company efficiently. No Islander believes that if the £3 a day charge is introduced, it will stay at £3. The money is being used to balance the Hyle budget. That's clear from parliamentary answers and other sources. So if the government cut the Hyle grant, all the management make a complete mess of centralising air traffic control in Inverness, which many believe will happen, then what will they do? They will increase those car park charges. Finally, let me observe to colleagues across Parliament that if you represent an airport so far exempt from this air tax, it won't last long. Concede this principle at Sumbra, Kirkwall and Stornoway, and those airports not currently paying for parking will be next. Presiding officer, when I was Transport Minister, Hyle asked me to approve car parking in the islands. I said no, well actually I said a bit more than no, but I won't use unparliamentary language um, this afternoon. All my successors have said no as well, and I thank them for that. I've given our current minister a real alternative to hitting islanders with this new tax. I suggest that he also says no to Hyle, and please do that today. Thank you very much, Mr Scott. I now call Edwin Mountain to be followed by Rhoda Grant. Mr Mountain, please. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And I'd like to thank Tavish Scott on securing this important debate. And for the record, I add my support to the motion that he's raised. And I'm also going to agree with him. I think it's very sad that we're having to have this debate in the chamber today. I don't support High Isle's decision to impose car parking fees at airports that serve island communities in Auckland, Shetland and the West Ham Isles. Three pounds a day might not seem much, but that soon adds up when travellers are away for an extended period. It's not fair for those who work offshore. It's not fair that for those that can only receive medical treatment outside the islands. Some might say we don't want to pay the fee. Yes, I will. Minister. Just, it would be important for him to acknowledge that it's already been said that those that are travelling for medical reasons would not have to pay the charge. Who would acknowledge that? Edward I, I'll, I'll certainly acknowledge those people that have to travel for medical reasons don't have to pay the charge. But what about their families who want to go down and see them? What about those people that need to go down? And I absolutely believe the critical importance of families visiting relatives who are sick and away for treatment aids their recovery. And those people shouldn't be having to pay either. And it's not fair for those who work offshore, I said. And I also would like to say that there are some that might say, well, OK, they should pay the fee if they don't want to take the bus. Well, that's not always a practical solution. And intermittent public transport on the islands doesn't actually facilitate the use of public transport. Now, I'm also unconvinced that the fee will pay for itself. How much is it going to cost to police the car parking charge? How, many, how much will it cost to introduce ticketing machines? How much will it cost to introduce barriers? How much will it cost to introduce the administration to raise the fines that will no doubt follow if people don't pay? So it shouldn't be about cost because it's not going to be cost affected. And I don't believe the costs are justifiable. Now, the manner in which the Highlands and Islands Airport have made their decision to me to introduce car parking charges is, to put it lightly, pretty arrogant. No wonder businesses, and especially families who depend on these airports, are angry. I agree with them. I would be too. To take this court of action without consulting community, this, and especially those that impacts, is to me completely unacceptable. And then to add salt to the wounds by surveying the passengers after the decision has been made really just adds insult to injury. No doubt Hyal are being forced, uh, facing challenges to me, uh, sorry, no, no doubt Hyal are facing challenges as regard financing, but pressing ahead with their own preconceived solutions without inviting feedback and discussing with airport users what they should do and what alternatives there are, this, this is wrong. In my two years as an MSP, I've seen far too many decision makers ignore the voices of local communities. Lessons have to be learned. Trust breaks down between those communities and the decision makers, and when especially when local uh, sorry, approval has not been sought. 
whether it's being matters related to healthcare provision, the closure of rural schools, downgrading of sewage treatment uh, facilities, decision makers must listen, listen to communities. If HIO really want to bring the communities they serve along with them, then they should have come up with a workable solution in collaboration with those communities. Presiding officer, to me, Highlands and Island Airport need to think again. Introducing car parking fees is not the best way forward. And I urge them to scrap this and work with lo local communities and with all parties to find a better solution. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mountain. I call Rhoda Grant to be followed by Liam MacArthur. Ms. Grant, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I also want to congratulate Tavish Scott for securing this debate on a really important issue for our island communities. I think it was almost adding insult to injury that the process began with the announcement of the parking charges and then when there was a public outroar they decided they were going to consult on its implementation not actually on whether or not there should be parking charges that consultation has never taken place but actually consulting on its impl implementation and that's part of the they have said that they will be looking at ways to make sure that those traveling for health purposes will not have to pay the parking fee and it's my understanding that that is part of the consultation process that's taking place so it just seems that they are doing this on the hoof they haven't thought about it they haven't spoken to anybody and there are an unintended consequences that they now need to deal with and I think that's absolutely unacceptable. Tavish Scott talked about um, the average cost to a family going on holiday if they were to park their car at the airport. That doesn't take account that people already have to pay more. They've paid for their holiday, but they have to pay for flights to the mainland to access that holiday. So sometimes they're paying twice as much already, and this is just going to make that family holiday even more inaccessible to people, especially people who are not on high wages. There's also a, an economic impact. Our islands suffer from depopulation. And we need to do something to reverse that. And one of the things that has been happening of late is that people live on island but work elsewhere. Offshore workers are common, but um, in, other, in other walks of life as well, people do that, keeping their family, wanting the quality of life um, that they get from island living, but being forced um, to work elsewhere to, to sustain their families. And that's going to add a cost to them, as well as other people who need to travel for economic reasons, small and medium-sized businesses, the voluntary sector, and many, many others. It could actually put people off living on islands. It could be the, the difference between being able to stay or not. They might have to consider moving to the mainland just because the additional costs they already face them with the flights, um, and this adds to it. So it, it is not a good idea. It also adds costs to the public sector, the public sector that is struggling in the islands um, due to austerity, and this will add another cost to them when their, their workers um, and staff need to travel off island. So an, an, another detriment. Um, it also doesn't take account of um, the distance and spread out communities that those airports serve. We have many small islands that people need to, to drive from Unst or Yell or somewhere like that all the way down. So the distance from Lerwick to Sumbra is, is, is huge. But once you start um, going to those other islands, you're talking about a long journey um, and no alternative. Um, for instance, in, in for the uh, Stornoway Airport, you could be 60 miles from Leverborough to get to the airport. And public transport won't do that. So it's almost adding insult to injury. You don't have the public transport to get you there. And then um, you're being asked to, to pay. And I think that there is a wider issue with, with HIAL, and I want to touch very briefly on air traffic control and the centralisation of that. I think that is detrimental as well to our island communities. And local people, HIAL did well. They trained up local people who were rooted in their communities in air traffic control. And now they're saying to those very people who applied for those jobs, did the training, you are going to have to move. And that's going to have a knock-on impact onto those economies. So we can't really ignore that. We have the Islands Bill. It seems to me that this is being sneaked through before that bill becomes law. But if we're serious about island proofing, we need to stop this happening. And indeed, the other issues with HIAL. They are a publicly owned company to provide lifeline services. And these policies are actually letting down the very communities that they've been set up to serve and is so certainly not providing a lifeline service. 
Thank you very much, Ms Grant. And I call Liam MacArthur to be followed by Jamie Halker johnson Mr MacArthur, please. Thank you very much, Deputy President. Well, so can I start by echoing the concerns expressed by Rhoda Grant in relation to the, um, the, the centralisation of air traffic uh, control services, an issue I think we will return to in this chamber. But can I also offer you uh, an apology, the Minister and indeed the Chamber, uh, for the need to um, uh, make myself absent to attend the Justice Subcommittee on Policing, uh, which uh, is about to start in a minute. Uh, I have to say, if you told me earlier, I'd have called you earlier, Mr MacArthur, so it's a worthy cause you're leaving I, us for. I will, I will not hold that against you at all, Mr uh, President Officer. Um, but uh, oh, for obvious reasons, I wish to uh, participate uh, in this debate and thank very much Tavish Scott uh, for allowing the Parliament this uh, opportunity to discuss an issue that will have real ramifications for the community I represent. I think Tavish Scott very graphically set out uh, the case against the introduction of uh, airport car parking charges uh, at Sumber and the real challenges that this will present. And I accept that circumstances in Orkney are slightly different. The airport uh, in Kirkwall is closer to the main uh, centre of population. There is an existing uh, uh, bus that operates. However, all three uh, airports have uh, similarities too. They're the gateway for islanders accessing lifeline air services. That are already costly. Uh, bus options for those not living in Kirkwall can be limited uh, or indeed non-existent. And there is a suspicion that the charge will be the thin end of the wedge, a cash cow that Heil will then go on uh, milking whenever it feels the need. Heil insists they've had no option but to bring forward car parking and charges. And whether or not this is the case, the way that they have gone about doing it, as all three speakers to date have said, is wholly unacceptable. In Orkney, of course, we've been here before, back in 2008, similar proposals, albeit targeted solely at Kirkwall Airport, were unveiled only to be hastily then dumped a few months later after Heil failed to be able to answer any of the most basic questions. The U-turn, unfortunately, didn't come quickly enough to avoid the installation at the airport of the parking machines, which then had to be hastily concealed with black bin bags and gaffer tape. <laughs> Fast forward a decade and it seems none of the lessons have been learned. Despite the earlier ham-fisted attempt to impose car parking charges, Ingalls Lyon and the Heil Board chose to embark on this latest attempt without any prior consultation whatsoever. As Tavish Scott reminded the Chamber, Heil's strategic plan talks of a commitment to, quote, effective collaboration with airport users and stakeholders. Yet not only were stakeholders, including all three councils, not informed in advance, Heil's own airport consultative committees were also left in the dark. And I should know, Deputy Presiding Officer, because I was there. During a three-hour meeting in the St Magnus Centre, not one mention was made of the prospect of car parking charges that were then uh, announced a matter of three weeks later. Whatever the legal requirements on Heil, that failure to be upfront, yeah. open and consult with those affected yeah. is shameful. I accept that there are issues possibly a debate uh, to be had. For some time now, concerns have been expressed about capacity issues at, uh, at Kirkwall Airport at certain times of the week. There's a suspicion of cars uh, being uh, dumped there for safekeeping, free of charge. Yet, while there is undoubtedly an issue, presumably there are other ways uh, of identifying those vehicles concerned and having them removed or fines uh, applied. Likewise, I would support efforts to improve the bus service that already exists. But we need to recognise that even with significant improvements, not a practical or realistic option will this be for many living in rural parishes or for those catching uh, yeah. early morning uh, flights. Other uh, groups whose interests appear to have been largely overlooked by Heil in the development of their proposals are those from the smaller isles in Orkney. The community councils of Papa Westry and North Ronsey, for example, have highlighted the disproportionate impact the charges would have on residents of both islands, whose ferry service does not allow, enable them readily uh, to take a car over to the mainland. Heil has offered to take these concerns on board, though it does rather underscore uh, the benefit of uh, having a, a consultation first uh, before uh, you've decided on what you're going to do. I think Tavish Scott is absolutely right. Heil's lack of transparency and piecemeal approach uh, to this uh, issue is not acceptable. We need a thorough review of operations, uh, a full consultation with the local uh, communities uh, themselves. And until that happens, these proposals will remain discredited. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Mr McCarthy. And I call Jamie Halker Johnson. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer, and I congratulate Tavish Scott uh, for bringing this debate to the Chamber, and also apologies to him and to yourself for missing the start of your speech. Um, 
as an Orcadian uh, uh, Highlands Islands Airports Limited is my local operator, and I declare an interest as a regular user of its services, alongside many thousands of local people, businesses, visitors who travel to and from and within the Highlands and Islands region every year. <coughs> HIAL operates for public benefit in a region where communities can often be remote. Uniquely, it is tasked with overcoming that geographic isolation and connecting the highlands and islands, not only to the rest of the country, but to the rest of the world too. A journey might start in Sumbra, but it might end in Stornoway or Stansted or even Sydney. Our local airports are just the first part of our air bridge to the world. So the task HIAL is trusted with is an essential one if we wish to see the highlands and islands grow and prosper in the future. But it's clear that this must be done in line with the wishes of local people and with respect to local organisations, particularly those where representatives are elected to councils and other authorities to reflect local opinion. That is at least part of the reason that there has been so much attention paid to Hyle's announcement on parking charges. Certainly, I do not support the policy as it stands, but perhaps more importantly, I object to the way that it has been brought about. As the motion before us today points out, Hyle's own strategic plan pledged effective collaboration with airport users and stakeholders. Unfortunately, this commitment has flown off into the sunset. Let's not forget we are talking about a state-owned company that received millions of pounds worth of subsidies from the taxpayer. It also operates services that, in many cases, are lifeline links for people traveling to the mainland for medical appointments to access public services or to stay in touch with friends and family. Like people, uh, sorry, local people, businesses and visitors alike depend on them. But I'm not blind to the pressures Heil faces, the need to maintain and improve facilities while also balancing budgets. But with proper consultation, Heil would have had the opportunity to explain these pressures to local communities, perhaps even be able to create proposals that could gain wide, uh, widespread local support and that reflecting and recognizing uh, specific local issues were more sensitive to local needs. Tomorrow morning, I'll likely to be using the airport bus service in Kirkwall, but while I recognize alternatives exist to driving, as my colleague Edward Mountain just said, these alternatives are not available or suitable for everyone. And even where they do exist, they do not negate the need for a fair, for a fair approach to parking. But my concerns are not just with HIAL. At times, it seems the Scottish Government have faced two ways on this. In response to a question by Tavish Scott on the 26th of April, the Transport and Islands Minister responded that consultation would be undertaken between the announcement and its implementation on practical implementation issues. However, the First Minister questioned on consult consultation on the 22nd of March has said, if it is the case that there was no consultation, that was remiss. These, positions, uh, these two positions cannot be held together. Indeed, most pressing is the Minister's statement that the Scottish Government has been kept informed of HIAL's proposals through their development. Did the Scottish Government not think at any time that it would be worthwhile talking to the local authorities ahead of time rather than simply communicating the decision to them? Did they not think of asking Hyal what the airport's individual consultative committees set up to build contact between the airports and local residents had to say on the matter? Deputy Presiding Officer, these connections are not just a local matter. We all have an interest in making sure that the Highlands and Islands is a positive destination to live, work and do business in. Hyal is now belatedly surveying local opinion. However, I would encourage them and the Scottish Government to learn from this experience and involve communities directly in decision making around their public services from the outset. Thank you very much, Mr. Alcor Johnson. I call Hamza Youssef to close for the Government Minister. Seven minutes, please. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. I'm happy to wind up this debate um, on behalf of the Government, which falls on from a very helpful meeting I had with Tavish Scott, uh, Councillor Ryan Thompson. Uh, and the now uh, Council Leader, uh, Stephen Coots, when I was in Shetland uh, and, and Lerwick on the 27th of, of April. Uh, generally, I uh, get along uh, very well with Tavish uh, Scott on issues uh, with Shetland and indeed uh, the Council, I'm afraid, on, on this one, there will be a fair uh, amount of, of disagreement, but there are some areas uh, that he raises uh, where I do have some sympathy for, and I'll, I'll touch upon them uh, where I can. Uh, first, very helpful, I think, to give a context of uh, the Heil Estate, they operate 11 airports on behalf of the government, all must operate within a strict regulatory uh, environment, which ensures the safety, obviously, and security of passenger staff and crew. Uh, but also probably worth uh, mentioning, although Heil, of course, uh, uh, is described as, as, as a company, uh, the government uh, subsidising uh, that company, all monies, all monies that Heil uh, raises, uh, of course, uh, they are a not-for-profit organisation. 
are reinvested back into air services, back into the airport estate. None of it is creamed off the top, skimmed off the top for shareholders. It is all not a non it is a non for profit organisation and therefore reinvested back into the estate. So this is this measure is being taken forward purely, purely uh, in order to ensure that our services to our islands communities and from our island communities are sustainable uh, for the long term. Car parking charges uh, of course, already in places, as many members may well know, in Inverness uh, and Dundee uh, airports, and welcome into effect in Kirkwall, Stornoway and Sumbera from the 1st of July, those charges being £3 uh, an hour for each of the 24-hour uh, periods. Of course, I will. Rhoda Grant. It seems to me a pointless exercise to be now consulting when you have confirmed those charges are coming in and Hayal announced them without any consultation. Surely this isn't right to have a policy change without consultation. Minister. Now, I was going to touch upon the consultation, but I'll just get straight to it since the members raised uh, the issue. The consultation that's taken place uh, between, well, since the announcement was made, I think in the middle of March, to, to, to when uh, these car parking charges come into effect, is to see whether there's any the practical implementation, to see whether there's some benefits, where there's some concessions. Some of those have already been raised uh, from passengers. I think around about just uh, shy of, no, just over, sorry, 500 uh, responses have been received from passengers, and they may well, may well focus on things like people. Uh, and job seekers or, for example, those that live furthest away from the airport, particularly in Shetland's uh, example, perhaps in apprenticeships, which has been mentioned, uh, I see from passengers uh, as well. But in terms of the actual consulting, if, if the suggestion from Rhoda Grant is there should have been a consultation on who wants to pay more charges or par parking charges at their airport, I can't imagine very many people would agree with that. Who on earth would want to pay more or would want to pay if you didn't? It's her suggestion that we don't bring in measures because people don't want to do it. Therefore, the Highland High Airport would have to cut air services or not reinvest in their estate. It, to me, doesn't seem like a very uh, practical way of taking forward what, yes, will be deeply unpopular measures, I'm sure, because nobody would want to pay them, but at the same time have to be brought in because we need to make air services sustainable. And of course, I'll give way to Rhoda. Rhoda Grant. Acknowledges that it's deeply un unpopular. Of course, it's deeply unpopular. But those are lifeline services which are already expensive enough for people who can ill afford it. And this is adding another cost to island living, which, which just because of their simple geography, um, in enjoy a less, uh, a less buoyant e economy. We need to change that, surely. Well, let me Minister. Just, let me just continue that uh, vein of argument for a second. That, uh, when I say it's deeply unpopular, I don't think anybody wants to pay more for anything. That is generally accepted. Uh, that is the case. So the practical implementation and consulting on the practical implications, uh, implementation of this for me is really, really important. Hyla are doing that genuinely uh, with an open mind. I suspect when they finish their consultation, there will be some element uh, of concessions. But what I would also say that this is about the sustainability of the air service. Now, uh, Tabby Scott brought forward a uh, a proposal, the first time I've heard of the proposal, uh, I should say, on, on the heating system. Of course, we should look at that. I would say that, uh, I, I, I don't know the figures exactly that Mr. Scott was quoting, but uh, I do have the, the, the figures here for the uh, the subsidy uh, that is required for Sumbra Airport, and in revenue terms, it is over 500,000 uh, every single year, so it's significant just for Sumbra. Uh, the other proposal that, that Mr. Scott, along with, with Councillor Ryan Thompson, which I, they put forward in absolutely good faith, and, 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 and I think well thought out from their perspective, was, for example, for a for, for an extra 40p to be added to Logan Air's uh, uh, land, landing charges. And that might be another uh, way uh, to look at income generation. But uh, of course, Logan Air have said that if that comes into effect, they would have to cut a flight, uh, possibly two flights, one from the uh, Shetland to Glasgow, one from uh, one of the Aberdeen uh, flights as well. Now, that would be even more unpopular, I suspect, uh, and would go against exactly what Rhoda Grant uh, is talking about in relation uh, to the sustainability of your service. Of course, I'll give way. Edward Mountain. Minister, I, 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 I'm thankful for you giving way. I mean, one of the questions I asked in, in, in my speech was whether this was cost effective. You know, you've, you've mentioned the costs of running the services. Presumably, before you introduce a charge like this, you work out how much it's going to cost to run and how much revenue you're going to get from it. I would Minister, suggest that the sorry. revenue is pretty limited. Yes, Minister. So, and, and, and how you'll have that information in terms of how much it will cost, obviously, of course, they'll, 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 they'll uh, revise and, and review those figures uh, as necessary, but he can speak to Hyle about that. They'll be able to provide some element 
uh, of those figures. I don't know if he's met Hale uh, on that. He certainly hasn't written to me, I should say, uh, on this issue uh, at all, though he seems to be uh, outraged uh, at it. So those figures do exist. He, they can be provided, of course, there's some uh, commercial sensitivity, but they are doing this uh, so that they can, of course, uh, make sure our air services are sustainable for no other reason, because Hale is a not-for-profit organisation. Of course, they Tavish can. Scott. I'm grateful to the Minister. I take his points about uh, savings. If it turns out that replacing heating systems, not just at Sumbra, but at other uh, parts of the estate as well, can save the kind of money that I've been told about by people who understand this issue, uh, would he undertake to make sure that that is done, rather than putting the car parking places, because that would achieve the same objective that he has of, of saving money. Minister. I'll certainly undertake to, to look in, in all good faith at the proposal that Mr Scott, if you can provide it with, 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 with good detail. Uh, but, I, you know, Hyle, as I say, are doing what they're doing in order to make our air service sustainable uh, for the future. Uh, and although I absolutely respect that Tavish Scott uh, is uh, bringing this on behalf of his constituents, uh, I should say that the correspondence that's come in has not been uh, overwhelming. There's been uh, nine from, from in relation to Sumbra, nine correspondence to me uh, in relation to, to, to Sumbra. I don't think there's been any correspondence from Jamie Halker Johnson, certainly not on my uh, record that I can see here, and certainly none from Edward uh, Mountain and SLA on this. And uh, I have very few in the single figures for Stornoway and Kirkwall. Uh, that again it suggests to me from some of what I've seen that people understand that Hyle are doing this in order to ensure that the air services are sustainable for the future. So I, I will, of course, uh, if there are alternative proposals, and Tavish Scott is the only one to have raised those alternative proposals uh, with me, we will look at them and ask Hyle to look at them uh, absolutely in good faith, but this is about the sustainability of our air services to our islands. These are proportionate measures being brought in. They will help to save, safeguard uh, those air services. And I think something all members can agree on, that, that can only be a good thing. Thank you. That concludes the debate. And I suspend this meeting until 2.30.